Hi everybody, I am Said and you are watching one of the videos from my channel The Key. If you wonder why I am here with a telescope, I need to tell you that in my channel I work on different fixes and different adjustments. And of course, the telescope has several different things to be adjusted. In this video, equatorial mount and how to adjust it. Before starting anything, I want to tell you why we spend a lot of time and a lot of energy to adjust something like this mount. It is really sophisticated and we can use other types that are basically really easy to adjust. Uh, look at this condition. I have a star over there and I want to adjust my telescope toward it and I want to see it. Look at this. I need to move my telescope. Basically, they have two different axes. One of them is this one, a vertical axis. Another one is horizontal and the telescope can rotate around it. And now I want to see that specific star over there, slightly higher than the horizon. I need to move it this way. This is the azimuth. And then I need to bring it up and this is the altitude. Right? Because of this, this kind of mount with these two axes is called alt azimuth. And I can see that the star very easily. That's it. And I lock my telescope and watch that the star. The problem is that after some minutes, the Earth is rotating around its axis, of course. After some minutes, I can't see that the star or that, or that the specific object anymore because it is not in my view. What I need to do is that I need to change it slightly because it moves in such a way. A really curved path. So I need to slightly change the azimuth and slightly altitude. And then azimuth, altitude, azimuth, altitude. How many times I can do it? The problem is that, as you can see, I can track that object easily. But the problem is that you are using a lot of time adjusting your telescope instead of watching the stars or instead of watching different things in the night sky. And this is where that kind of a specific mount is coming to be. The equatorial mount. I just told you that the problem is coming from the fact that the Earth is rotating around its own axis. And look at this axis. This is exactly uh, normal to the Earth. And what we need to do is to, first I need to bring out this piece. And then I move my telescope in this way. Look again on that specific axis. I want to make it quite parallel to the Earth axis of rotation. And I adjust it on around 40, which is the latitude of my region. And now it is almost uh, parallel to the Earth axis of rotation. And to be able to compare it with the previous example, I put it in this way. Assume that this one is my north. And now again I want to uh, look at that specific star. I move it in this direction. And after finding it, I lock my telescope. What has changed here? If I lose this one, if you look at the movement of the telescope, you will see that it exactly and smoothly follows that specific path of apparent movement of the object in the night sky. Look again. I am looking at that specific star, and when I move my telescope, it is smoothly follow that specific path only with one axis. So I am not needy to do a lot of adjustments during stargazing. As you see, it is really worthy of working on this kind of a specific mount and learn how to adjust it. You need to consider some time and energy to adjust it and afterwards you just looking at the night sky. 
In other parts of my video, I will tell you how to adjust this month exactly, and afterwards, we will be talking about another issue. Instead of talking about azimuth and altitude, on this kind of a specific mounts, we are encountered with two really great things, right ascension and declination. To adjust the telescope with equatorial mounts, first you need to put one of the legs of your tripod toward the Polaris. And how to do so? You need to first look at the north part of the sky and uh, spot a little deeper. At one side of it, you see a single star, which is the Polaris. It is very important for us because of the fact that when Earth is rotating around itself, the Polaris is at the north side of the Earth, and it never changes its place uh, during the rotation of the Earth around itself. So it shows exactly the axis of the rotation of the Earth. So we need to find it first. If you are not sure about this star that you have found as uh, Polaris, we can do another thing. Again, look at the north of the sky and find the Big Dipper. Two stars in the Big Dipper, if connected with one line to each other, and then if you continue that line, it exactly hints the Polaris. In this uh, setting, you need to first, as I said, put one leg of the tripod toward the north star, the Polaris, and then put your tube straight. The condition that you may have seen in images of the telescopes, now it is almost straight. Mm, nice. Try to put this axis toward the Polaris, as far as you can, that's enough. The other thing that you need to do is to level your tripod. You can install some specific application on your uh, cell phone, your iPhone or anything else that you have, uh, like a uh, bubble level. It has a specific mode on which you have surface leveling. A bubble is at the center and you play around with the legs of your tripod, making them longer or shorter. And finally, uh, you can reach to a condition in which the bubble is at the center. It alarms you, showing that the leveling is done. Another thing that you need to do is just working with two axes. One of them is this one the latitude of your telescope. And another one, this knob. You can rotate your telescope in this way. Just with these two things, you need to spot the Polaris from the finder. Try to find it. If you move anything else like this one, this is not an adjustment. You need to keep them all straight just try to rotate this axis and this one, the latitude, to be able to see the Polaris from here. When you have done that, lock it. And in this condition, you just need to do another thing. Look at this, my friends. Put your telescope in this way. It may have some momentum and may want to rotate around uh, some way. For example, look at this. This small movement can create a lot of problems for you when you want to spot uh, specific objects in the night sky. Why I say that, for example, look at this. You have put your telescope in this way and you are watching something. Look. It rotates around with itself. The problem is that you are watching an object in the night sky and before you have enough time to lock your telescope, you will lose your object. So, we need to do another adjustment. Put your telescope in this way and try to see whether or not 
it wants to rotate in this or that direction, right? I feel that it is tending to go this side. Not a lot. If you have encountered with such a problem, it is quite clear. You can lose these two knobs and these rings and move the tube in this way. For example, if the ending mirror, the large mirror, tries to bring your telescope tube down, you can bring it toward here. And it is quite clear, with very small movements, you will reach to a point that your tube do not want to go anywhere. Mine doesn't have a lot of problems. And here is another important thing. Most of the eyepieces are very heavy, like this one. Put it on your telescope <laughs> because when you create these adjustments at the end you put uh, the eyepiece and everything would change again. So it is worthy of using it on your telescope and check any all things one more time. Not too bad. Doesn't want to go anywhere. That's okay. And another axis. Look at this one. If I put it in this way, slightly toward here, what I need to do is that changing the place of the counterweights. This one is responsible for creating a lot of momentum because its distance is a lot with the axis of rotation. I put it back into its place and see what happens. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. Better than before. And if I put it in this way, you need to play around with it to find a point that your tube doesn't want to go anywhere. It's almost done. Mm -hmm. As I said, this one can be used for very large momentums, and this one, which is basically a very small distance to the axis of a rotation can be used for a smaller ones, fine-tuning your device. It was better before. Mm -hmm. Now it is working pretty easily. As I said, we need to do this kind of adjustment because we don't want to lose our subject. For example, I have found a star in the sky and I'm working on it, watching it. I may completely forget that I need to lock my telescope, but it goes nowhere. Another reason is related to mechanical parts of this telescope. If you do all of these adjustments, you don't create a lot of unnecessary forces and momentums on different parts of your telescope. Of course, you don't want to damage your telescope because of the stargazing. That's okay now. You need to now bring it back into its original condition. And then again, look at the finder, look into the finder and look at the Polaris one more time. If it is not uh, adjusted now, you need to create some changes again on latitude and the movement of the telescope toward left or right. And uh, it would not be a very sophisticated thing. It is not a lot. You don't need to do a lot of changes on your telescope afterwards. Uh, it's almost done. At this point, you are able to watch the sky very easily. Look at this. Again, I want to spot something in the night sky. For example, a star over there. The only thing that I need to do now is to move my telescope by this axis. It moves smoothly with the path that the stars move in the night sky. Pretty nice. Just one axis of rotation. To understand what is going on with the usage of equatorial mount, consider the Earth at the center and its axis of rotation. Imagine a relatively large sphere around the Earth. We call it celestial sphere. 
it is really useful to describe the night sky. And now we project the equator of the Earth onto this large uh, celestial sphere. And now we have two parts, northern and southern. And now this is the movement of one object in the night sky as we see it in the sky. This one is called right ascension or RA. And this one is called declination or DE. In reality, when you have a specific, a specific object in the night sky, you lock the declination and everything that you do is on right ascension. With the movement of that specific object in the night sky, you just change the right ascension. And look at this, my friends, because of the fact that finding it on the telescope is slightly tricky and strange. This one is declination, which is done around this bar. Consider the bar of the counterweight as an axis and your telescope too is rotating around it. This is the declination. And this one is the right ascension. Slightly strange, huh? Well, this is exactly the right ascension because of the fact that it is rotating your tube around this axis, which is parallel to the Earth axis of rotation. So, one more time. This is the declination and this movement is the right ascension. Hope you enjoy and have a really great night sky watching. Thanks a lot for watching this video and let me know about your ideas in comments.